Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. This time we're talking about one of my favorite tunes, Walking by Myself, by one of my all-time favorite blues artists, Jimmy Rogers. I just love his singing and I love his mellow guitar style and I love his music. By the time this song came out in 1956, they kind of had the glorious Chicago blues post-war sound down to a science. The interlocking guitars and the soaring harmonica that kind of weaved in and out and then really, really soared like a, like the saxophone in a, in a jazz combo. You know, they had it down to a science and uh, this is a perfect example. It's an eight bar song with a 12 bar solo, which is another common form for some of the more kind of how would I say, almost like a pop approach to a blues song. You know, it, it's like, it has a catchy melody and it has a quicker form, but then they really give you the blues during the solo part and then they go back to their little song. So um, there's a lot of songs like that, Little Walter, and, um, Billy Boy Arnold, and Jimmy Rogers. So interesting enough, this was his only actual R&B chart hit. Probably not his most famous song now, that would be in, that's all right. But uh, anyway, um, this is a beautiful song. And this has Robert Lockwood on guitar. And it's kind of a yin-yang because Robert Lockwood is as strident with his rhythm as ever. And he's kind of, you know, he always sounds a bit angry to me, you know. Not always, but often, you know, like especially on a shuffle. I mean, he just... You can see Luther Tucker was actually like Lockwood Part Two with the, the driving clipped rhythms that he had. So he's got this driving clipped rhythm. Um, and it's hard to hear. I would really recommend using headphones. And even when I use headphones and really study at it, I don't get, I'm not getting some of it. But he's basically doing, I'm talking about Robert Lockwood now. He's basically doing his typical um, Robert Johnson style thing that he would do in A except with a band context and then he switches it up towards the end and starts using ninth chords not towards the end but towards the uh, solo section but um, I'm gonna start with the eight bar section and what I'm going to do is play Robert Lockwood's part and then I'm gonna add I'm gonna switch my guitar tone and I'm going to add in Jimmy Rogers' part. Now, Jimmy Rogers uses fingers, and he's playing out of here. There's a great version of Jimmy Rogers playing on live at Conan O'Brien. You can see Jimmy Rogers playing it there, and he's just playing right out of here. He's just playing the melody, and then he does something great. He goes, which is so cool. That's not on the record, but that's on the Conan O'Brien uh, clip, which I recommend. Um, I love the way he did that. It's like playing a ninth chord like this. Which is the chord in Tanya. It's a real Lewis Myersy chord. And, you know. Anyway, so let's start with the rhythm. I'm going to make it real bassy. Kind of like that. And then the real key to Lockwood's part is that at the end of the second bar, you'll see this kind of five one so i'll start with the looper i'm gonna try it again and i'm gonna slow it down see this this kind of thing you know if he was in the E position you know he'd go like that but he I think he's in A because I can hear this F sharp down here 
that F sharp is the third of your D chord, so that's for the four. He's playing a D seven, or maybe like that. Either way. I can't tell if he's doing this. Probably is, because he tends to play this stuff kind of as set pieces, but it's really hard to hear it for me. So I'm open to uh, suggestions, corrections, and uh, and so on, as always. So let's try it, okay? The F sharp, then the E. Okay, cool. So that was, let's see if we got that. Just turn on the bass on my guitar. I've got it on this pickup with the treble off. Even that is good enough. It's like an E7. Hey. It's not all the time, but a lot. And then the seventh, if you have a one finger A chord, I just use my third finger on the third fret off and on the E string. And then here's the D seventh with the F sharp in the bass. Just chunk that bass, man. You could try this turn around if you want, but it's hard for me to tell what's going on. It might just be that. That would kind of complete the picture for Lockwood's kind of part there. Let's so, talk about Jimmy Rogers' part, which was kind of the subject of this whole lesson. Um, this is right in the middle of your A chord, right? It's hammer on to the 6th fret of the G string and then the 5th fret of the B string. Then use your pinky or third finger out the 8th fret of the B string. 7th fret G string. Here's what you just did. Now roll over to the, the A note on the E string. See how I just rolled over. I didn't pick up my finger. I just rolled it over. And the trick is, don't be dead on the no all the time, like with the middle of your fingertip. Because then you got to stop your flow and pick things up. If you're kind of down here a little bit, it's easy to roll. And all of, all the lead guitar stuff is all about rolling. See how I did a roll here? And a roll here, especially with your B, the BB King stuff we talked about last week. And Little Milton. You're going to roll. So, this time you're rolling up instead of rolling down. And then that's your seventh note, right? Right on the A seventh. And now we're on the D. So, picture this D chord, but you don't have to play it. Just use your seventh fret, e, B string, seventh fret, B string. And then I would say you can use your third finger or second finger there. I like to use my second finger and just kind of instead of having my wrist exactly underneath, 
just tilt it this way a little bit. If you put your elbow closer to your body, it might sort of turn your wrist to the side like that. That's how I like to do these things. See how that's a D7? And then here's your five chord. Don't play it, but you think it. Then everything rolls around this note, the root of that chord. Which is like the great one of the greatest moments in Chicago blues history because of you know Big Walter just that was his day that was his day and um, all the harp players if any harp players are watching this I'm certainly preaching to the choir here and it shows the contrast of Lockwood and uh, and uh, Jimmy Rogers and it shows Jimmy Rogers like beautiful simplicity to what he plays he just does this. <laughs> He's playing in A ninth. And then that's uh what Lockwood does at the end. Lockwood, of course, is playing way more complicated. He's doing this Robert Johnson stuff. And then he's just lumping like on a D ninth and then the E ninth, it sounds great. Let's try that again. So now I'll go to four. They're really digging in and it's hard to hear with the harp. Oh, and then you hear. actually see him do something really similar to that on the Conan O'Brien too. And then he does the E with the pinky out. Yeah, so he's playing way more complicated. But he's really kind of buried, so you can just do whatever mix of those parts you want. You know, I mean, if you're lucky enough to, if you're lucky enough to have two guitar players, you guys can really work it out. Um, so that's what's going on, and I love the way Jimmy Rogers plays so melodically, and I love the way he uh, puts things in a nutshell so well, like this. Like it's like, okay, we're walking, you know, and they, they boy, do they dig into that shuffle, you know. Um, like, for example, on Gold Tail Bird, this is the greatest beginning of Gold Tail Bird. Something like that. Talk about putting a, the four bar intro into a nutshell and putting a mood there right away. You know, Gold Tail Bird, that, that talk about a beautiful mood. He was so great at all the slow blues. So um, any memories of Jimmy Rogers or for that matter, uh, Big Walter, who's a, kind of the star of this track. Um, and and then Robert Lockwood's kind of like the, the almost hidden backbone of this track. Uh, um, you know, definitely share your thoughts and uh, any memories like that you may have. Um, hope you enjoy playing this song. 
And, um, you know, if you're a beginner, I mean, this is very accessible as far as the melody, the first uh, 12 bars. So have fun with this tune, walking by myself, and see you guys next time. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.